lavender. Uh, Red day! Red day! Red day! Red day! Honestly, I'm just piecing it together as we go. It seems as though <laughs> bread day is when we just show up to a place that serves incredible bread and we go hard. Man, bread day is uh, is introduced by our girl BB when we come out here to Bella's. Wait, hold up. Is this communion? Did we? Are we like gonna do a whole day of communion? On Fridays, every Friday we come to this bakery and we only bread for 24 hours and we just get enough bread for each meal and each snack of the day. So today we brought everybody to experience a little taste of bread day. So we're only doing bread breakfast, but you know, still bread day. Hey, yeah. hey nine. Yeah. I don't know. I, it's almost like I wasn't aware that I was, mm. but then I was. And that was like part of the issue. Mm -hmm. Because if I really didn't like you, it was uncomfortable. Everybody knew it. And I would make sure that none of my friends would talk to you. Like if you nice. were mean, everybody was going to know it. You were a monster. <laughs> um, but if I didn't really like you, but I still could use you for like some sort of manipulation and control, I would be just super sweet. Mm. Like, hey, mm. how are you? Tell me all your deepest, darkest secrets so I can use them against you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, and I felt like I had to be that way because I had been hurt, like, I don't know, by other people. And so then I just developed this, okay, well, if I can be in control and be mean first, I'll never get hurt. Mm -hmm. So then when the conversation about freedom from sin started happening, I felt like that was absolutely impossible because how could I be forgiven when I can't forgive? Mm. Like, what are you talking about? Like, how could I really forgive? Let's use Tyler as an example. <laughs> he was the big one. Like, how can I really forgive him? So then how could God really forgive me? Like, that feels like I'm not truly forgiven, so that means I can't truly forgive people who have hurt me. Here's the thing, though. Mm. I am perfectly forgiven. Mm -hmm. And so then once I realized that, then it was like, oh, I can forgive people even before they hurt me. <laughs> like you were like yeah. all just like yeah. operating yeah. in my extension of forgiveness because I'm operating in his extension of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. But I was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I was very mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was really nasty. My favorite story though is your savage. Oh, like I'm what hearing you read? you're here oh, with gosh. Josh. Yeah, <laughs> that's my first. So I was favorite. nice to like everyone else around me. Yeah, but those closest to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So especially. Poor John. Um, Sorry, John. From the get-go, I was like, oh, you're you're just a practice boyfriend for me. And he was like, okay. <laughs> whatever I need to be, oh, I yeah, guess. Whatever. And then, um, oh. yeah, we kept dating. And um, I eventually broke up with him because I was like, I'm going to be a savage. I'm going to go. And I'm going to go do me. Yeah. And then I was like, you know, but no one else treats me like John does. Like, he's actually really sweet yeah. and like a really nice guy. So I got back together with him. And I was like, but I want you to know that, like, I'll get back together with you, but... You're here, and like I'm up here, so there's that. And he was she like, basically said, "I'm out of your league." Yeah, totally. She did. She said yeah. that. She yeah. said that. Your league is here. And then here. he was like, "Okay, but wait, will you marry me?" <laughs> and I'm like, oh, "Okay, I mean, cool. As long as you know, I'm like up here." Oh and he's like, "Oh, I know. You are so lucky. Okay. Yeah. Don't you know how lucky no, you honestly, are? Honestly, right I would tell him that all the time throughout our marriage. Like, you were a blessed man. <laughs> and he was like, "I am." <laughs> So, I think I said something. So, so I think you were pretty oh like savage to like yeah. people around you, like yeah, just was. other people. Yeah. But I was even more to, to my try. husband. Yeah. Oh man, because I it, feel like we laugh because it's laugh. so ridiculous yeah. knowing you two now yeah. that sure, that was yeah. even who you were. Sure. Because it's so far from who you are. <laughs> so like I had a experienced all of that pain of mm -hmm. like people sinning upon me yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I internalized that and was like oh I deserve it mm -hmm. so let me keep putting myself in situations that are unsafe emotionally physically because this is where I'm supposed to be interesting yeah because there's got to be something like defective or wrong with me because yeah. this is the way that the people who are supposed to love me most mm -hmm. have treated me so like this yes, is just okay. how I deserve mm -hmm. to go through life and how mm -hmm. I'm supposed to go through life um, 
And so I was very, very comfortable being hurt. Mm. Mm. Right? Mm. I thought, yeah, I thought I earned it mm. by being who I was. When Jonathan shared the prodigal son story in light of freedom, Spirit spoke to me so, so clearly and said, people might have called you all of those things mm -hmm. and might have treated you all of those ways and said all these things about you, but I've never said anything yeah. but daughter. Yeah. Mm. And that one word just shattered mm. all of that. Yeah. Everything, every other word that had ever been like spoken. Mm -hmm. Daughter just like rang so clear and true and yeah. pure and broke all of that. It put me in the in my rightful place mm -hmm. in my rightful place there wasn't anything wrong with me there wasn't anything defective um i deserve to live exactly how he desires for me to live yeah which is in perfect love and peace mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. that's so crazy yeah to hear like the two different perspectives between like i deserve to be treated this way versus like you deserve my treatment of you mm, yeah. like Tyler and John for whatever reason just God deserve to be <laughs> <laughs> those blessed boys I'll tell you that right now that was some blessed boys but it was like um, yeah I have to treat you this way because you hurt me like I'm sorry you just mm -hmm. deserve so in the same way that you felt like you deserved it I thought the same way about Tyler yeah like you deserve me to treat you poorly because mm -hmm. of your actions. And then Jesus comes busting in like, you know what you guys deserve? Mm. Me. Yeah. <laughs> because you're my Me. kids. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, you wanna talk about what's deserved. It's, oh, I don't know, uh, redemption and freedom mm -hmm. and like peace that <laughs> surpasses all understanding. And you're like, wait, so that actually speaks true for everybody then. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause you mentioned like you didn't feel like you were capable of forgiving other people and then you didn't feel worthy of being forgiven. So it's like, it's how you see yourself. Yes. And then when we get set free, it changes how we get to see everyone else. And it's, it's so beautiful. And then you start to realize, oh my gosh, Jesus died to reconcile and redeem literally everyone. <laughs> and you just, all of a sudden you see all these people as image bearers and you can't see them as anything else anymore. Yeah. I experienced all of that hurt and all that pain that people had put on me. Mm -hmm. And I would be like, oh, they, like, it's, you know, uh, I would be really angry with them, mm -hmm. sure. right? Because I was like, I can't believe that you would do that to mm -hmm. somebody, right? Even though I felt like, oh, I totally deserve it. Like, I still can't believe that you would hurt somebody like that, right? Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. They just were living out what they believed yeah. about themselves and they didn't know anything else. Totally. Mm -hmm. And like, I love you and I'm so sorry mm -hmm. that you didn't understand right. who you were. Yeah. You know? And I want you to come over here. Yeah. 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 And no, like, literally, what you're describing is what Jesus said on the cross. Like, forgive them for they don't even know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. With the crazy, people be like, oh, well, we can't be like Jesus because that's Jesus. Like, that's the son of God. Like, we can't, we can't really be like him. What are you talking about? Yeah. He gave us his spirit. Yeah. yeah. So of course yeah. we can talk like him. Yeah. Of course yeah. we can walk like him. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, well, yeah, it's hard. Yeah. yeah. So we can literally say like, oh, forgive them for they don't even know what they're doing. Yeah. Oh, it's almost like you have the power that raised Jesus from the dead. <laughs> like it's almost like the Bible says that about you. We <laughs> have I think I've read that before. Yeah. yeah. I just, amen. It just feels like release for everyone involved. Like Jesus straight up died not just for the victim, but for the perpetrator. Like yes. both of them what? find redemption at the foot mm. of the cross. Joyce, what? Like, <laughs> so good. Mm -hmm. The so bad good. guys. <laughs> Jesus died for the Tylers. <laughs> what do you mean? But he's the bad one. Oh, that was old Morgan. I was like that right now. Yeah. I'm like, oh no, the gospel is just for people who mess up like Tyler. It's not for me. No, there's healing mm. for both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then it's no more like, that. oh, I'm here yes. and he's down here. Hey, actually, we're both like Wait a way up. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Heavenly places. Yeah. Like, oh, we can't go there. Like grown sister. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. I like it. What happens a lot in these types of conversations outside of true understanding of who God is and then also in tandem who we are mm. is that there's a lot of like, 
you're gonna be fine. Like mm. you have peace. Like Jesus loves you, and it's a lot of this. Yes. Mm -hmm. But there's no true healing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And what we've all experienced is complete transformation and healing, not just in the present of like I'm okay. Out, you know that stuff happened in the past mm. and like mm -hmm. I understand and I'm moving on but like mm. no it literally doesn't matter what happens now right yeah. because mm. nothing can touch me mm. because mm. it's not me yeah. that lives but Christ who's living in me absolutely yeah. and absolutely. like I'm so good uh -huh. mm -hmm. and I'm gonna continue to be good mm -hmm. because mm. he's good and he's the yeah. one that's filling me yeah. and mm. yeah absolutely just like an hour ago, Morgan asked, how are you doing? And I like, I always love this question yeah. from people that understand, you know, mm -hmm. freedom from sin and that mm -hmm. they're God's child identity. Mm -hmm. Because when she asked how am I, I'm doing, I'm like, I'm great. Yeah. Like, yeah, life, yeah, yeah. life can't be better. <laughs> yeah. Like, my life is oh amazing. It's perfect. Nothing's wrong with yeah. it. Like, yeah. and, to, and to some people, that sounds so, like, made up or yeah. Yeah. not I, real. Not real. Yeah. And it's just like, this life is so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what happens. It like BB saying, just yeah. can't touch this. And it's what we were it, like it's what we were created for. Yeah. Like I think God delights so much in the fact that we have received finally our identity like from him mm. and finally like quieted enough to listen and hear our identity as a daughter before we take on anything else. Mm. Um and he loves that. And so mm. he watches us down here living our best life, yeah, no matter literally. what our circumstances are right. and he's like yeah that's what i wanted the whole time like i mm. wanted to have so much intimacy with you that you would never doubt how deeply mm. loved you are and you would just love on all the other kids <laughs> like mm. it's incredible mm -hmm. i don't know if you guys ever had to answer this question growing up especially in high school but someone would ask you like how's your spiritual life like how close do you feel to God right now? Yeah. And now I hear that question and I'm like, we are always in spirit. Yeah. Like, so everything ends up being spiritual mm -hmm. and not in a weird, like mm -hmm. froofy way, but just mm -hmm. like, because we live mm -hmm. and walk in the spirit, like there's yeah. no, there's no disconnect anymore. There's no, my spiritual life is at arm's length. Um, God is now at arm's length and I somehow have to now pull him into me through my actions or behaviors. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, yeah, all the time, Christ in you. Mm -hmm. It's pretty sweet. And I love it because it's like a spirit of belief. Like, what are you believing? Um, my, my, my son, he's six months old. He's born into the sinful world, mm -hmm. but he was born as an heir. He was born as a son. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I get to teach him and I get to instruct him that he can believe that he's a son. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to believe that he, you know, messed up as this, you know, boy who can't get anything right made all this mistake like you know you're a son and you always were from the beginning of time he was predestined just like in ephesians like predestined for for goodness for greatness for all the things so yeah i love that yeah i'd love to hear a little bit angie because i know you <laughs> and Christian <laughs> went through some went through some things <laughs> well you want me to go into me and christian so <laughs> um well i feel like a lot of like what happened between me and christian was like, because I believed that I didn't have like any value, was like I accepted any treatment that like mm -hmm. made me kind of feel like I did, mm -hmm. even though in the end I was left feeling like worse. Yeah. <laughs> so I would do a lot of things that I wasn't comfortable with, like even before Christian. And yeah, I just remember thinking like, why is it that I keep doing this when I feel worse in the end like it's just for a brief moment mm -hmm. and so for me when I received freedom that was the most like beautiful thing ever because I feel fulfilled mm -hmm. and knowing I don't lack a single thing mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just so it's so like relieving mm -hmm. you know like I don't have to depend on somebody to tell me like mm -hmm. you're so beautiful mm -hmm. like I get to just believe it because like you he are. literally created me in mm -hmm. my mother's womb and that's yeah. like Ugh. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. so like it still makes me emotional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it's so much more than like what I ever thought. Mm -hmm. Like that I just was like born into this world like no, like he literally I made me. You. Mm -hmm. He's the yeah. designed you. And so how could there be something wrong with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like how could I ever believe mm -hmm. that? So mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. And what's so crazy is what you just said is not like this yeah, Jesus loves me and like everything's okay. Like it's yeah. legitimately true. No, and so something I think that I've been like challenging myself now in is like, you know, whenever we get our periods, like we feel really uh. down in the dumps. <laughs> like, you know, Down there's in the that dumps. day, there's that day where like, you're like, oh, I just 
feel terrible today. Like mm -hmm. I look terrible, you know, like all that kind of starts mm -hmm. wanting to come in. So my hormones don't even have to have a say over my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And so I've been Love challenging that. myself in like the moments where I like want to do my makeup because it might make me feel pretty, mm -hmm. especially like on those days. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to use something to make me feel a certain way mm. because of what I know. Mm. Yes. So I'm not going to do my makeup because that actually has nothing to do with like who I am. Yes. So that's just something I've been like challenging myself in. And it's really nice. Because <laughs> then I'm like, wow, I get to just be confident in my skin, like in who I am. Yeah. It's all because of him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I feel like as women from like the time, the our very very first moments mm -hmm. when our whole value is wrapped up in how mm -hmm. we look, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, look at this beautiful little girl. She's so cute. Let, you know, like all of that. Oh, yes. We are we're conditioned to believing that our value is tied to our body. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And for a long time, I think for a lot of us mm -hmm. <laughs> at the mm -hmm. table, um, we moved through the world, and I know this is true for me, that there was something, I had something missing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so if I could get just a moment of validation, mm -hmm. and it like, if it was something physical or even just knowing that a man was desiring me, yeah. mm -hmm. like it didn't even have to be an interaction, mm -hmm. just yeah. knowing that he wanted mm -hmm. me yeah. made me feel like, yeah. like I had something yeah. worth. And I totally right? agree with that because I dated someone because all the girls like liked him and thought he was like the cutest boy. And the fact that like the cutest guy wanted me. Mm -hmm. Oh sure, it's yeah. Like oh yeah, I'll take yeah. that. Yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. All right, yeah. fine. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's my whole life story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I I navigated my entire life based off of having something to prove. Mm -hmm. Like so whether it was performing in school or with work, but especially with the male species, yeah. I had this strongest desire to be desired. Like mm -hmm. for someone to say, like, I want intimacy with Joyce, I want to know her fully, and I want to see her fully. Mm -hmm. And so I just chased that feeling all the time and it led me to do really mean things. Mm -hmm. And yeah. also things where I hurt my own feelings right. because I'm mm -hmm. trying so desperately to earn and to prove all of the time that I wasn't taking, I wasn't leaving any space or any room to hear God saying anything mm -hmm. true about me. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's crazy because now I know that the entire time God was trying to communicate that with me. Like mm -hmm. I've, you already have all the validation you'll ever need. Mm -hmm. I you think you're infinite perfect. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, right. I think you're perfect and gorgeous, mm -hmm. and um, I made you perfectly and whole mm -hmm. and complete and holy. Like I lived my whole life being this perfectionist. But, like how can I be a perfectionist if I've already been perfected yeah. in love? <laughs> Amen, like yeah. it doesn't make That's any right. sense. And so now I'm like I want to only hear and believe what my mm -hmm. father says about me like if it doesn't match up with what has God said it literally doesn't land it just slips mm -hmm. right off my shoulders because I already like I've heard it from the only one that really matters and so it's it's incredibly freeing to all of your points like incredibly freeing to be able to wake up in the morning and not have to be concerned with like how do I feel today based off of what I look like today or, or based off to of prove something yeah oh my gosh it's exhausting yeah. yeah it's exhausting yeah. to live like you have to prove your mm -hmm. position in every space you go into yeah, yeah. and it causes lots of anxiety um, yeah. and um, even like hormonal issues because your cortisol levels go up and down a lot like it's really destructive to live in that space where you're insecure about your own value and we've been set free from that yeah. and so grateful and now we get to live just completely secure and at, at complete rest mm -hmm. with yeah. what is at all times like mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what's happening I can have peace with what is and yeah. it feels so good to live there.